Okay, so tonight, I'm going to talk about a guy that I'm pretty sure none of you have heard of. Because I sure as shit had never heard of this kid. And again, I found this case through me being a weirdo looking at uh, old newspapers on eBay. <laughs> and they sell old press photos of, like, murderers, serial killers, all sorts of random things. Like, just photos that, like the press took and then they kind of just publish it. Like I've seen press photos from, for everybody from like Manson and like the biggest, like Richard Ramirez, the biggest people you can think of. And then you get these random little press photos of like teen murderer from New Jersey is convicted 1938. And you're like, what the fuck? So you go and you see, and you find all of these random cases next week. I got a doozy for y'all. But I am going to talk about Danny LaPlante. Daniel LaPlante is his Christian name. But this kid was a hot fucking mess. And what are the few things that you know about hot fucking mess kids? Ones that are, you know, murderers and killers and have issues with... Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Why are you going after me? I didn't do anything. Don't, no, no. Thank you. Oh, good. You're all dead. Oh, I don't care about her. Let me see. Um, so, yeah. Daniel LaPlante was born in 1970 in a very small town called Townsend, Massachusetts. His name and face look so familiar, I know. And you know why? It's probably because he's been issued... Issued? Fuck. He's probably been featured on some random-ass episode on the Investigation Discovery Channel or fucking A&E or Forensic Files. You know those shows that have, like, 8,000 episodes? So they they start off with, like, the big guns, and then eventually they're like, We found a murderer in Quinticot... Full Canada in 1920. You know, they're just like scraping the bottom of the barrel for fucking just killers. And which is what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Daniel LaPlante was born in 1970. And uh, this kid did not have a chance. Um, like most of the people we talk about, I really feel like none of them get a fair chance at life. There are very few people who end up like this that I think had probably an okay life. Like, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer's life was kind of chaotic and shit, but like he wasn't ab abused like Otis Tool. He wasn't abused like Manson or probably Ted Bundy. Definitely Eileen Wernos, just Joseph Callinger. Just, you can... It rolls off the tongue how many fucking people came from just a horrible home. And this kid is no different. Um, the only part of his life that there really isn't a lot of information on is his childhood. Not a lot is said. The only things that we do know is that his biological father sexually abused him. Um, he sexually abused him he physically abused him. He he do he does what all people who hurt kids do. You know, hurt and used him any way he could for his own gratification. Um so needless to say, Danny had some fucking issues. Uh badly badly beaten and sexually assaulted as a kid by his own father. And um from there, it just kind of skips to high school, the information about him. So he, the only thing that came up over and over again when talking about Danny in school was that he was off. There was something not right about him. He was creepy. He creeped out other kids. He creeped the teachers out like... Okay, 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 okay. And the thing that he was known for was 
he refused to bathe or clean himself. He had a really, really nasty hygiene issue. He just wouldn't. And for me, you got to kind of think of, I've tried to think about it. Like there's always teenagers who are like, Oh, I don't want to fucking shower. There's always that smelly kid. You know, there's a teenagers are fucking lazy. You know what? And, and sometimes when they're in middle school, like, you know, when your body starts changing, you don't realize like, Holy shit, I stink, <laughs> you know, but this kid had really, really bad hygiene issues. And part of me wonders cause people are just like, Oh, he was just a dirty kid. He grew up in a dirty house and blah, blah, blah. For me, I'm more wondering, is it from depression? Cause you know, I know when I'm not feeling too hot, sometimes I skip a shower or three <laughs> for being honest here. And like, so I'm just, no, get the fuck. Okay. All right. Well, I can't just talk. I can't have nice things. I gotta go. I gotta go. See? Mm. So yeah, he stunk and he got shitty grades. <laughs> Didn't pay attention in class. Oh, come on. Come on. And so they sent him to a school counselor and this school counselor diagnoses him as dyslexic. Like he, the school counselor, like the, yeah, the school counselor, he, he talks to him, he gets him seen by somebody. They just, they, you know, pretty much figure out he's dyslexic and, uh, he has, um, ADHD you know, which is two pretty rough things to deal with mentally. Um, so does this counselor a become a beacon of light in his life, which he uses to drag himself out of B does the counselor do what like 50% of school counselors do and just not care or C did the school counselor sexually abuse him? The answer you thought was C, congratulations, you live in the real world. So yeah, this kid who was horribly physically and sexually abused by his own biological father is now being sexually abused by the school counselor of whom he was sent to for help. Um, blows my fucking mind. Absolutely blows my mind that he could be sexually abused by a school counselor and it just, but you think about it, people like that go into positions of power. So that way they can have authority over a kid and they can groom them. And, you know, it just makes sense. Okay. Yeah. But so Danny starts acting out and Danny starts peeping in on people, you know, skulking around their property, bullshit like that. And then Danny starts breaking into people's houses which, okay, you know, fucked up, but whatever. It's fucking eighties. He's bored. <laughs> He's in a town of 8,000 people. All right. But then he starts breaking in and opening a beer and leaving it out or moving the coffee table or moving the book that someone was reading from one table to the other. This kid was not only breaking into people's houses to steal shit. He was breaking into their houses to move things around to purposefully make them feel unsafe in their own home. Cause what would be the only other explanation explanation for that? Like I put, okay, maybe he's anning up the thrill, which is this like slow, what is it? You push boundaries. You, you, it, Christ, somebody who is a true crime fan, what is it called when they go from one step to the next escalation? There we go. Classic ex escalation behavior. He goes from peeping to breaking in to breaking in and eating people's food and leaving it out or opening, like pouring a glass of wine and, and just sitting it there on the countertop or moving someone's couch. Like, this kid went into people's homes purposefully to make them feel unsafe. And I, I, I think it was, I think it really was a power 
and control thing because think about it. Like he's a loner. He's to himself. He he's fucking scared of other people. He doesn't have any friends, but when he's in someone else's house and they're not there, he's the boss. You know what I mean? I kind of feel like that's how he saw it. Like, who? these people think they're fucking safe, but they don't know I'm here. So he keeps breaking into houses and eventually he breaks into this house and he figures out by looking at the family photos that two girls live there and one of them is very close to his age and he thinks she's pretty. So he figures out what her phone number is and just starts calling her. He's never met her. She's never met him. She lives in the town over. He told her, I thought you were so pretty. I saw you at a football game at your high school and I asked your buddy for your number and they gave it to me. And, uh, she believed it. She's 15 years old. You know, what is this little girl going to think? She's probably thinking, oh, cute boy likes me. Hell yeah. Rawr! Yeah, right? I agree with you, flesh sewn brawler. Ugh. All right. Um, so he starts talking himself up. He's like, I'm athletic. I'm handsome. I'm tall. Meanwhile, this kid's five foot four, like 130 pounds fucking soaking. Not five four. He was like five eight. But he's describing himself basically as fucking Shaq, but white. <laughs> you know, like he's he's talking himself up. So this girl, after you know having this phone relationship with this kid for you know a few weeks, people say some people said it was months, some people say it was weeks, whatever. And uh, he's like, "You want to go out on a date?" And the girl is like, "Of course, hell yeah!" So. He shows up at her house and instead of this fucking like bomb ass football player, big dick swinging fucking dude that he said he was <laughs> like, it's a dirty, like, and I, and I mean, like, you know, the people like you can see the fucking grease in their hair and like the dandruff that comes after the grease. And it's just like, covered in pimples, covered in grease. He stinks. And he's like, Hey girl, <laughs> QQ, <laughs> let's go on a date. So she's like, okay, he's not at all as he described himself, but whatever. You know what I mean? She's thinking, okay, whatever. I can go here. We have fun. I'll get free ice cream out of it. Cause that's what they did. They went to go get ice cream. So, over their phone conversations, Danny had uh, figured out that Jessica, uh, I think her name, wasn't it Annie? Annie, yeah. Annie's mom had died the year before from cancer. Um, devastating blow, fucking obviously. You know, nobody should lose a parent that young. It's horrible. But uh, Danny becomes completely intrigued by this and it's his sole focus of the entire date. <laughs> this kid, basically 1986 version of fucking catfishing, gets this girl to go out on a date with him, even though he is not at all as he described himself. You know, she still gave him a chance. And the conversation during the date goes from like, I'm so sorry your mom died. And it ends up with, did you, what color was your mom's skin when she, when she died? Did you hear her last breath? He actually asked her, did you see the light leave her eyes? She's 15. This is a date at fucking Dairy Queen. So she obviously upset says, fuck you. I'm out. This is gross. You're gross. This isn't what this date was supposed to be. I'm leaving. Fucking fair, right? Totally fair. Nah, Danny was pissed. Uh, so here is when the bullshit 
and the truth starts to kind of mend a little together. Because people started saying that Danny began living in the walls of their house. And, okay, yeah. No, I forgot I wasn't writing the regular thing. Why are you so, okay, you know what? Fuck your face. So people are saying that he was living in their walls, that he was leaving messages in fake blood on their walls saying, I'm watching you, he, pretending to be the dead mom. Like, it's a great fucking story, right? And, like, the girl, like, the daughter is trying to convince her father that, like, there's something in the house and she doesn't feel safe and the dad, you know, doesn't believe her. And <sighs> eventually they leave the house because they're terrified in the urban legend. And the dad comes home not believing any of this. He's pissed. He just thinks that his daughters are handling the death of his, of their mother bad. And he finds a kid dressed in his dead wife's wedding dress and he's got a hatchet and he's there to kill them and all this fucking shit. And, uh, get the fuck, just die. Both of you die. Just die. I don't like you. Thank you. Ooh, what are you? <gasps> what? Who is trying to kill me now? You know what? Fuck you guys. I'm I'm out. Nope. 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 Going the wrong way. This is my life. Okay. So there's all these bullshit stories basically about how. Nope. Don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare. Don't you fucking dare. Oh my God. I'm dead. Nope. 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 Oh, I didn't die. Thank God. Oh, I didn't die. So you know what? I don't think I'm going to tell you all the bullshit stories because it's bullshit and that's not facts. And I don't like things that aren't facts. So what is true? He did go on a date. He did harass this girl. And eventually her and her dad and sister came home and found Danny standing in the middle of their fucking living room. I almost said living room. Okay. Living room. Oh, with Indian war paint on his face. With a fucking 24 inch axe. <laughs> like a hand axe. Like a 12 inch, 12 inch axe. Like he had a fucking hand, like hatchet in his hand. That's true. So what he does is he starts chasing this fucking family around the house with his axe. Like, okay, that's inappropriate. But you get my drift. <laughs> and eventually the family barricades themselves in a bedroom and they escape out the window, call the cops. Cops show up looking around the house for this fucking kid. And they find him like hiding in a cupboard <laughs> like Harry Potter. Like he thinks he's going to get out of it. So, Oh God, they arrest this kid, take him to juvie. And you would think, how long do you think someone would, would go to jail or like be in juvie for basically attack, like attacking a family with a hatchet. If you guessed 10 months, then sadly you are correct. <laughs> so 10 months after this, and not only did he terrify this family with an ax, he fucked them up so bad that they sold their house and they moved to New Hampshire <laughs> and they were pissed, pissed when they found out that he got let out. Cause you know, <laughs> he tried to kill them for all intents and purposes. He had a fucking ax and was coming at them. So he gets out on $5,000 bail and he's just let back out into the community. So what do you think he starts doing again? He gets let out 10 months before the killing, two months before the killings happen. And he starts breaking and entering, stealing shit again. Of course. Why the fuck wouldn't he? And 
Okay, we're gonna get a stupid fucking quest. God damn.